I think a lot of this episode, what people don't realize, is lost to the sands of time. There are clips of it on YouTube, but the most humiliating nonsense has been axed from the record. Nobody has ever done this before. This is incredible. She's a genius. People have been victims to Saturday Night Live. It's not just You can't Taylor. even lip sync it because it's right. not worth yeah. the risk. She goes from, here's the cutesy things about me. I like baking. I like glitter. I like sparkly dresses. I'm America's sweetheart. To, do you guys mind if I kill Joe Jonas on national television? Welcome back to the evolution of a snake. I'm Zach. And I am Madeline. And today we are doing something a little bit different. We are reaching back into the archives and doing a bit of a Tay Rewind, if you will. Madeline, where are we Tay Rewinding to? We are Tay Rewinding all the way back to a mysterious time, a mystical time, a time immediately after one of the most pivotal moments of Taylor Swift's career. Well, I shouldn't word it like that. I should say one of the most pivotal pop culture moments of all time when Period. she got interrupted at the VMAs in 2009. A short two months after that, another one of the biggest things in her career happened and she hosted Saturday Night Live and was a musical guest. She pulled double duty and that is where we're going to today. Taylor's SNL journey has been interesting to me, and I have always wondered, especially when she like went back on for, you know, read Taylor's version and, and Lover, I was like, why didn't she host again? Why wouldn't she, you know, host and perform? And after reviewing the tapes, reviewing the SNL episode in full, I completely understand why she would never mm -hmm. want to step foot on that soundstage mm -hmm. in an acting capacity ever again. It was shocking. I have to tell you, <laughs> I, as as a grown adult watching it, I was really, really shocked. As a kid watching it, I do remember being like, mm, but still being like, mm. <laughs> but I was, th this was kind of, it was a little, you know what I mean? I was like, was, oh. There was a chip. There was a chip in the hand heart. But to be fair, if I was, if I had video evidence of me trying to be funny when I was 20 years old. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mm -mm. Goodbye. 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 Mm -mm. I think a lot of this episode, what people don't realize, is lost to the sands of time. There are clips of it on YouTube, but the most humiliating nonsense has been axed from the record, and as it should be, because I, it actually just got worse and worse as the episode went on. It kind of started out okay, and as we were getting towards the last performance of the night, I was like, oh my good God. It seriously, and you know what? I think part of this is that SNL is just not funny. I don't think SNL is funny. I don't get it. It's so American. Like, g give me an American perspective, Madeline. Do people think that SNL is funny? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, there are some, like, Saturday Night Live, like, Lifetime groupies. I love the show. Love the cast, you know, and, like, the iconic cast members. I love them and, like, this, that, and the other thing. But at the end of the day, I feel like even in the United States of America, even your average Joe is not turning on Saturday Night Live because they think they're going to get an hour full of amazing, incredible comedy that's never been done before. They're usually turning it on because, well, Taylor Swift is hosting, or Sabrina Carpenter is a musical guest, or Dua Lipa, or what, what have you, whatever your interest is. That is why people watch Saturday Night Live. It is not because Bo and Yang is there doing his thing. If there were no celebrities, there would be no SNL, really. That is like Period. the true fact of the matter. It's interesting because SNL is so lore heavy and it seems to be like in the comedy world such a respected rite of passage for to be a huge funny superstar and i mean we see that especially with this cast that taylor was performing with there it's stacked we've got kristen wig bill Hader, andy samberg we've got seth cohen wait seth cohen seth myers <laughs> seth myers seth cohen from the oc you wish it was seth SNL. cohen you I wish it wish, were <laughs> i wish amy poehler makes a brief appearance maya rudolph was on snl these are legends and it seems like you know snl is very difficult like they have to write that they, they tell all these stories about like writing late into the night and fixing things right before the show and i'm like girl all that work for this slop well here's something that i took out of the notes because i thought it was too mean but i'm just gonna say it now <laughs> I, said, I think that like snl comes from like the 70s where it was like a huge oh my god we're gonna snort like a bunch of cocaine and like do a bunch of crazy yeah. stuff we have 24 hours to make this amazing mm -hmm. show and it's just like you can't do that for years and years and years on end and it still be good like it was and funny for you... like create on amphetamines is not as funny as you think it is right. i'm sorry it just isn't 
It just is. And it's obvious here. And yeah. she, I mean, Taylor really had the one thing that Taylor was blessed with here was that she had an extremely talented cast around her. So I think they kind of carried most of the scenes, but there were times when it was very obvious that we did not have a professional actor on the stage. Uh -huh. <laughs> Listen. And they didn't, Listen. they didn't even really like play into Taylor Swift's lore or like who she is no. as a person really because some of the snl skits that i've seen that are pretty funny are from like the early 2000s with like paris hilton and with britney spears and with Lindsay lohan like those moments are kind of funny because they like touch on what the conversation is about these people i have to wonder if taylor's management or taylor's team were in the room with the writers being like this is what we're comfortable doing and taylor will not be doing more than that I think that's probably exactly what happened. I think that there were, and we'll get into this, but there was like a bunch of stuff that people really expected Taylor to like get into on SNL. And well, she addressed nothing. She nothing. addressed pretty much literally nothing. nothing. Yeah. And the whole point of SNL is that it's kind of like a meta thing, like you're appearing as yourself sometimes. And mm -hmm. Taylor just like didn't lean into that at all. She led into, I'm going to do acting. And that as we all know, never really ends well for her. And also it's important to remember that we were at a real like squeaky clean, the good girl effect, the good girl image was like so mm -hmm. in full force here. She was like, I am a young Christian American girl and I'm just like you and someone did something really mean to me and I'm here to show you all that I am the fairy tale princess. Exactly. And well, I, when I was... I must have been 16 when this happened, and I cheered. Mm -hmm. I cheered loud. <laughs> I cheered oh, the loud. Monologue, the monologue is great, and that is like right. the best part of the entire thing. And I think it's the thing that people remember the most, and thank God that's what they remember the most, because there are some things in here. Oh, girl, if people knew about that now, I think we might be getting canceled again. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Mm, There's one specific thing that no, is... I know so deeply questionable but i guess oh, I let's just it. get into it madeline let's you want to walk it. us let's... through yes the history yes. all the way at the tippy top so we're gonna start with taylor's history with snl so taylor has been from the start of her career all the way to now she has been on saturday night live a total of eight times over the years which is kind of a lot she's been a musical guest she has also given a bunch of like totally random cameos over the years like when she randomly appeared in seth rogan's monologue for like no reason in about 2017 i think she did that but she's only appeared as host on one fateful day in 2009 but she does have a bit of a long history with them and it's sort of to me like Part of her career is almost like appearing mm -hmm. on SNL. And she did a random cameo this past year. Remember when she just showed up with Travis? I got the yep. sense that that was completely like, just oh, Taylor's up. here. Taylor's here. Should we have her like introduce a musical guest? And that's exactly what and happened. And she's done that before. She's done that before with the, the one where she was like, whenever a guy shows emotions, I appear. That yep. apparently also was just kind of like completely added in at the last minute. I'm in favor of that. I'm in favor of surprise cameo. I'm not in favor of being a host. <laughs> I do not wish her to I... host again. There is a part of me that's really, really curious what it would look like today. I'm part of me wonders because now in 2009, the thing is like the lore wasn't that deep. Now we could do it. Um, uh, I mean, we could really get weird. Which but those writers probably not are not. They're not capable. The current team at SNL is like nowhere near ready to approach a funny, insightful meta Taylor Swift skit. No, they're not ready. They're, they're not prepared. Mm -mm. Get us so in Taylor's the room. Yeah, <laughs> we literally we'll tell you, we would write we'll some crazy something. We would write some crazy We would come up with something. So Taylor's really? first, her SNL debut, like the first time she was ever on, was on January 10th, 2009, where she was merely the musical guest. She performed Love Story and Forever and Always. And videos of these performances are really hard to find. And I can only imagine it's because they've been scrubbed from public record because they're horrible. Well, we found them. We found them. <laughs> horrifying. The forever. Love story is okay. Love story is passable. Mm. But what I noticed mm. is how much effort it took her to sing it straight. Like to just sing the song. You could tell this was at a moment when her live vocals were, I would say, probably at their all time worst. Just because they hadn't improved since debut. And she was live on stage every single night. She was more famous. This was before the fateful Grammys disaster. And forever and always was. I don't want to talk about that. 
We didn't it talk was, about that. It, she played her guitar and she was wearing a little like Peter Pan page boy collar moment. It was cute. She looked great. And then she opened her mouth. And <laughs> that chorus for Forever and Always is hard for her to sing at this, at this point. She didn't nail it at the CMAs or the ACMs or whatever either. So that was horrible mm-hmm. as well. Vocals, terrible. And she was really getting lost in the song. She was doing her hair flip. She was doing the back up, baby, back up. She really thought that was like the line serve of the century. Why well, did she I think that so that too. was like I thought so too. the moment? Well, now, <laughs> well, now, now it's not, but back then, back up, baby, back up. Oh, but there was know... no hand out into the crowd. This was just, no. I'm going to do extra back up, baby, back up. Well, you know what I had on my iPod? Like I ripped it from YouTube was the, the fearless tour. Back up, Oh, I had baby, that too. Back Oh, I would listen to that and be like, with the introduction. Oh, yeah. If guys don't well, write, she's some, incredible. Want, want me to write bad songs about that? They shouldn't do bad things. They <laughs> change everything. Things. They shouldn't but, do bad things. Yeah. In hindsight, it's like, what was that about? That's an we ambitious song to perform live on TV when you are not able to sing it. And the last chorus of that, she throws the guitar away and starts headbanging. And the vocals, also something else I noticed about her vocals at this time, she learned how to hold a note, like hold a really long note, for example, when she did change live. But sometimes she would hold the wrong note and then it would just be a protracted hold of an off key moment. And I was like, girl, cut the mic. Cut the yeah, mic. somebody cut, cut the mic. The mic. Cut the mic. <laughs> Put her out of her misery. Put her but she out did of it. Her misery. Oh, she did she it. She did it. Additionally, in this episode, she did do one skit. Often, like, musical guests will just show up in one skit just for the giggle of it. And you know something? This is the first time she ever put on a red wig. People don't know this. SNL. That's Laura. <laughs> SNL is the start of her putting on a red wig because she played Little Orphan Annie in a skit about Broadway characters. Yeah, she put that red wig on. She never looked back. It's been red wig she ever since. She said, wait, I actually look <laughs> incredible. Wait. And it's a with bad a red wig, wig too. And it's a mm-hmm. bad wig. But she was it's like, an ice spice ooh, wig. Ooh, ooh, oh, that's what it is. It's, <laughs> it's her. Ice it's spice. ice spice. <laughs> it's ice spice, but make it strawberry shortcake. I mean, you know what? I and this this skit was it great? No, but it wasn't the worst. No, that was her SNL debut. Again, she's been on the show seven other times aside from that. My personal favorite Saturday Night Live moment is all too well ten. I have to say, all too well, ten on SNL was re- the snow when the snow falls. She had me. Mm-hmm. She had me in a chokehold. I have to agree. I simply have mm. to agree. I thought that yeah. was incredible. I think I also really liked parts of her Reputation performances, but they oh, were. Yeah. She seemed tentative and scared, really, because it was her first big return to the public stage. I thought False God on SNL was actually pretty good. That was that was kind of interesting. I I remember. <laughs> sorry, she was wearing I a blazer. It. I was like, gonna, I was gonna say something like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah," but I, I hate that performance. You so hated it. I'm oh, you hate it. hate it. Well, she I doesn't sound it. good. I hated it. No, she I doesn't sound it. good, but she looks good. Her performance was... of Lover is worse. Let me tell you that her performance well, of Lover is worse. Just the piano. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have anything positive <laughs> to say. I, well, I, I'm I, saying, nothing nice to say. Why do we have a tortured poet's <laughs> performance? That is really well, you just know not, why. It's not right. It's sick. You know why. Well, the air is tour. I mean, come on now. <laughs> you know come why. On now. Come on now. <laughs> but Midnight's, she was around. Yeah. Let's talk about that. You're on your own Anti-hero? live. SNL. Heard of it? Mm. On the piano. You love to play that song, allegedly. Allegedly. And I'd like to hear it. And I'd we like would to like hear to hear it. it. So yeah, I, I agree. To All Too Well 10 is my favorite SNL moment. It was so meaningful. She boots that performance. The lighting, the staging, oh, everything. It was Gorgina. She knew what she had. Mm-hmm. She knew what mm-hmm. she had. Um, but she of course, her most she gave it her all. Her most important Saturday Night Live moment is when she hosted and played musical guest. And that happened in season 35, episode 5. So now to set the scene for you, Fearless Platinum Edition had literally just come out like two months before this happened on September 10th, 2009. So then SNL aired on November 7th, 2009. So ostensibly the appearance on SNL was to, in some shape or form, promote Fearless Platinum. And it's also which worth explains it to know, which the explains song selections that she why did. she played Untouchable on the Saturday Night Live stage. Uh, if you don't know that, then you're probably like, why was she playing Untouchable? Well, mm-hmm. I still don't know why go. we weren't playing another song from Fearless Platinum. The other side of the door. Truth. Just keep she it didn't fun. know what she had. That that was a situation where she didn't know what she had. She did Mm-mm, not know no. what she had. No, not a clue. Not a notion. 
in this same week as well, this was the CMA Awards. This was probably like in my memory, like as a Swifty growing up as a kid, this CMA Awards was one of the most important that Taylor did. I believe she performed twice. She performed 15 and then she did Forever and Always when she's throwing the couch oh, yeah. off the stage. And she won Entertainer of the Year. This is a very famous Taylor Swift acceptance speech. She's in the princess, strapless, gold oh, gown, everything. pinned the hair, hair, crying, Gorge. Entertainer of the Year. If you can, it's weird to say the term Entertainer of the Year because like it was such a big thing in Taylor Swift fandom. Yeah. And now it's like it doesn't even matter because it's a country music award. Mm-hmm. Um, and let me tell you, we were eating good. A straight week it was of major. nothing but it was also Taylor, major Taylor. for someone that young yeah. to win that award. Like it just, everything yeah. about this period of time was like, it was golden. Like daylight. Oh, we, we were eating good. We were eating. It we was were an empire. It was the feasting. empire of Taylor. And, and we were I getting was really a new happy. album, basically. We were ready we for Fierce Platinum. Brand new album. Oh, we, we were ready. Were ready. Oh, I was seated. I was ready. And you mm-hmm. know what's funny is that I was so desperate for a piano version of Forever and Always. And the fact that it really exists. I mean, do I listen to it today as a grown adult? Well, no. But Oh, but I, I sobbed to that. Oh, I was crying oh, yeah. to that. Oh, yeah. And it was different. It wasn't the acoustic Lavender Haze right. version where she just mm-hmm. takes the lyrics and puts a guitar sample behind it. This was a re-recorded number. You know what I was thinking? It would have been, the the thing to do here really would have been to have Mr. Perfectly Fine be the single from Fearless Platinum and do that on SNL. What was going through everyone's mind? Untouchable? We love her, but come on now. We could have had a hit on our hands. (laughs) I guess, I guess she was thinking like, oh, I'm doing You Belong With Me, so let me have like a low, kind of like low down moment. But So do 15. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. So, but no, but no, no she but just no. <laughs> she just had to do it her way. Nonetheless, mm-hmm. uh, like I said, she did double duty. She hosted and was the musical guest. Now, my truth is that I thought that this was something really rare. I thought that only prodigies and geniuses <laughs> did double duty on SNL. And it it's turns true. out, look at the material. Well, Look at the material. I, yes. Well, to an extent, yes. But it's not rare, rare. Uh, a lot of people have done this. Paul Simon, <laughs> the Rolling Stones, yes, the entire band, Olivia Newton-John, Dolly Parton, Britney Spears, Jennifer Lopez, Justin Boom. Timberlake, Janet Jackson, Queen Latifah, Bruno Mars, Justin Bieber, Dua Lipa, and literally a bunch more people have done this well, before. But me, I okay. remember thinking it was like, nobody has ever done this before. This is incredible. She's a genius. And I tell was you, she the that youngest was... person to do it. I would think Britney would have been the youngest, actually. I think Britney mm. might have been the youngest. Sorry, doll. Taylor, I just kind of remember it being like a way big deal. <laughs> and meanwhile, Dua Lipa has done it. <laughs> so it's like i i don't it's know not, why yeah. i thought that it was the ingenue thing i guess everybody's talking about because there was like well a you lot were brainwashed well i know many I such cases no i was brainwashed let's mm-hmm. call it what it is mm-hmm. i was brainwashed and i was happy many to such be. cases nee, nee, nee. Mm-hmm. i'm so happy in my taylor most state. legendary person in the history yeah. of the world and were you wrong <laughs> no yep so before the show, this is what Taylor had to say about the opportunity to host and be musical guest Forget. in an episode of Saturday Night Live. She said, quote, I've been thinking about skit ideas for a long time. There are definitely some hilarious things that have happened to me over the past couple of months. C- couldn't be more true. And I think what, what will be, be pretty substantial skits. And yet. And yet. And yet. <laughs> Does and addressing yet. things for like one second in your monologue count as a skit? I don't think so. No, not, not in my book. Not in my book. Mm -mm. She called the opportunity also mind-blowing, and she said she really wanted to collab with Andy Samberg, who, of course, at the time was one of the biggest, like, he's Andy Samberg. And sexiest. Yeah. Don't forget that. (laughs) At that time time in SNL, like, a lot of the stuff from that time period of SNL that was actually good was being made by Andy Samberg. So, I mean, we have to clap and cheer. Was this when he was doing the pop star stuff? Or was this, like, before that? The pop when he star did that stuff. like movie about him pretending to be Justin Bieber, basically. What was that called? That what movie, are that, you like, talking about? That satirical about? movie. No, you I thought this. He, no, there was a movie where he was evil Knievel, like that kind of a thing. No, no, no. You're no, talking no, about no, 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 no. No, I know Will Ferrell was in a movie like that. Lonely Island. Lonely Island. That no, was him. No. no. 
Was Lonely Island a movie? Lonely Island was the name of his little duo that he did on Saturday Night Live with like the digital Popstar. shorts. Okay, have you never seen this movie? It's called Pop Star Never Stop Never Stopping, but that came out much later. No, but it literally is like no, a no, 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 no. It's it's Lonely Island, but it's a mockumentary on a pop star's life and the person that they're never impersonating, making this. fun of is Justin Bieber. You have got to watch it. It's hilarious. Is it? When's the last time you watched it? Can I ask you that that's question a good, on a That's actually level? a good point. That's <laughs> Can a good I ask point. you that? <laughs> Is it one of point. those things that, like, if you didn't watch it when you it were 15, be. you're never going to like it? No, I think it came it's out in 2016, so it's actually, like, a fairly recent development. Really? And it was when Where Justin Bieber was being was a real I? asshole. It was when Justin Bieber was, like, really just terrorizing the nation, oh. and everyone was like... Oh, and yeah. it sends up Scooter Braun, too. Like, they make fun of Scooter Braun, so we, we clap. Well, as they should. Oh, this is, a, I might have to, we need to go into the archives because I'm, I, mm-hmm. I'm surprised I never watched that. I don't know what I was doing. Me too. I'm surprised you didn't watch it. You need to watch it. I don't know what, I was too busy, I guess. Too busy to watch Andy Samberg movies. Well, we what had bigger things going on in 2016. We really did. Oh, we had baby. other things did to focus we? on. Mm-hmm. Another thing that Taylor said ahead of SNL is that she said that she went back and rewatched quote unquote everything in preparation now that's what a kind lie of overachiever nonsense that has what are, got who are you talking to be to? a lie you watch 35 it's an hour seasons long of SNL. show <laughs> no, and I... there are 30 episodes how many hours mm-hmm. is that girl you don't no. have time to be doing that you're flipping your hair and designing the, the chair that you're going to throw off the stage you don't have time to be watching every episode no. of snl it kills me when she does inconsequential lies like this i love it i love it <laughs> well it's like you just know nobody shit. believes it like come on no. girl who are you talking no to no one believes that nobody believes it but i am so glad that she said it <laughs> last but not least she said quote i love being around people who i feel have a different kind of creative genius and the funny genius is definitely a fascinating one to be around unquote <laughs> she wanted to kiss andy sandberg more than she's ever wanted to kiss anybody and the I sense said, that well, I kept yes. from this. Well, yes. I said, why well, not? yes. There, there were and a couple not? of men on this cast, actually, when I was reviewing yeah. the episode that I also wanted yeah. to kiss. Bill Hader. Yeah. Kissy. Right. Kissy. Also, like, in uh, their the prime, Seth too. Myers. Seth Myers. <laughs> his his title card, like, in the <gasps> intro, I was like, and he looks at you with his, with his big eyes. I was like, oh, Oof. no. Oh, Seth wow. Myers is sexy. I forget. Seth Myers. He He's is. like one of those he guys that you forget about. And then, like, you see him and you're like, oh. Unassuming Wait. sexiness. Unassuming Hold sexiness. On. Who is that? Um, <laughs> hot. Sorry, He's everyone, a hot for our He's a hot diatribe man. on the hot cast members of SNL. But you know what? It's true. It's true. So back to scene setting. At this time, I repeat, Fearless Platinum had just come out. The shocking VMA's Kanye West incident had also just happened a mere couple of months earlier. She was still dating Taylor Lautner from Twilight, and she was still honking and hooting and hollering about the Joe Jonas breakup. In November 2009, yes, you heard this correctly, she was still going on about that. And my question to you is, and what about it? Yeah. Uh, We're promoting fearless. Why not? We're promoting fearless. Why the hell not? I think there was a period of time where she was lining up forever and always to be a single because she was doing it a lot. And the Joe Jonas thing is like, it's the only song on Fearless that's about him. And she talked about that a lot also when it came out. So I think there was a period of time where she was lining it up to be a single and it just for whatever reason didn't work. Well, Dumb. also, she was mad as hell, and she <laughs> stayed mad for years. Mm-hmm. For years, she point, stayed mad year. about that. She's yeah. at least a year out from the actual oh, yeah. breakup of a relationship that we all know wasn't that serious to begin with. And at I love that about point, her. We hadn't even gotten to speak now. Like, to even put more context into your head, we Mm-mm. she was probably, if anything, maybe in the process of writing A Better Than Revenge or A Last Kiss, any kind of, like, I'm actually processing this breakup now. Oh, I don't think she was song. into Last Kiss just yet. I don't think no, she was No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, she I had, think she was in Better Than Revenge. Yeah. Better Than Revenge, we were there. She had also, mm-hmm. like, maybe only, like, just met in passing John Mayer. She actually, like, they had a text, or, excuse me, a tweet exchange on Twitter in front of me and God and the whole world. By the way, mm-hmm. I forgot about this. That shouldn't have happened. That should not have happened. It wasn't anything nefarious. It was just like, oh, well, I'm nefarious. listening to Taylor Swift. And it then Taylor nefarious. Swift said, it was 100% nefarious. <laughs> what did she, what song did she tweet? It was like, I'm listening to, um, what is what is one of his famous songs? Not Your Body's a Wonderland. That has too many implications. I don't know. But it was like, uh, Stop um, the Train? That seems like a song she would like. I, I'm gagged. I don't know. I don't, I actually don't know what that song is. Well, well, that one's actually pretty many good, such cases. but it's kind of tailor cases. Coded. That one, that one's many tailor such cases. So slow dancing in a burning room. Oh, she could that, be into that. Slow dancing in a burning room. That's actually I 
would say that that's probably like one of the best John Mayer songs. A lot of his mm-hmm. hits are like not good, but this is not, we're going to not start to like, talk about this. So a lot of the articles that came out ahead of Saturday Night Live were sort of focused on the Kanye West of it all. Again, because it had just happened. Daily Mail, for example, asked, quote, will Taylor have the last laugh at Kanye's expense? And Unlikely. Vulture pettily wondered who is going to upstage Taylor at her SNL hosting gig. And then some random TV critic named, I sh- you not, I had to include him because of this. His name is Miles McNutt. He claimed Terrible. that the Kanye incident is the only reason that Taylor was even asked to host the show to begin with, which is, of course, very... Meanwhile, they barely mention it. They barely, barely mention, it. mention it. Probably because Taylor was like, no. I'll say it once and then I'm not <laughs> saying said, it again. That's it. That's She's it. like, I can pretend <laughs> that I'm okay with what happened for f- about five seconds, but if you push and prod me anymore, I might start crying. So obviously people were like... Funny. No, it will not be funny. Obviously, people were completely obsessed with this event. And it's like, to be fair, it was a huge moment in pop culture history. I mean, now we think of it and it's like iconic and it's legendary and everybody remembers it. And also people were, I think, still kind of like taking the piss about it as well and making fun of her for it. And the question seemed to be looming over the Saturday Night Live appearance. What is she going to say about this? Will she make a gag out of this on the show, including the Joe Jonas stuff and including the Taylor Lautner stuff? It was a real opportunity for her to do a blank space moment and be like aware of the fact that, you know, people were saying things about her to to have a sense of humor about herself, which I think is an allegation that she uh, didn't have one at the beginning part of her career. She took everything very seriously and she wasn't ready yet to be poking fun at herself. This was still raw. She wasn't there. Well, she was she was but a child, you see. I mean, Mm. I wasn't able to laugh at myself when I was 20. I don't know about you guys, but I took myself and she real serious. Coming out. She had an album coming yeah. out. That's really why they booked her, because that's how they yeah. book the musical guests well, who's got something forget. new coming out. Why was Taylor on the stage in the first place? Lest we Promote forget. Fearless Platinum. And she did that. Right. She did Period. that. Exactly. Shall we talk about the photo shoot? Shall we talk about the photo shoot? So everybody who comes to Saturday Night Live does a little photo shoot. And because mm-hmm. Taylor was both host and musical guest, she got a ton of pictures done, actually. Um, so my favorites out of these are the ones that have the midnight blue backdrop. And then they have the pink and the purple lights. And she's got her hair is like really kind of like teased and very curly. And she's wearing like the tube top. I love those mm-hmm. pictures. I, those are like now, some of my favorites. I agree. But half of these are also giving Coles. Taylor Swift for Coles. Yes, um, yes. There, now that you mention is, it, yes. there is just <laughs> one picture of her in what I can only presume is a yellow muumu, or like a mm-hmm. bedazzled beach mm-hmm. cover up that Lisa Hochstein from Real Housewives of Miami would wear, mm-hmm. and I was silenced by the stylist selection here. But she is kind of giving Greta Garbo, like with the hair and the angle. Like there's something very old Hollywood about it too. But it also is giving. I live in West Palm Beach. And well, my 75-year-old sugar daddy well, just bought me a Rolex. It's very Boca. As he should. There's something very Boca, Florida about it. And yet, I cheered. It, it's <laughs> Speak no, Now like, coded as well. Pictures. That it red is my dress. Th- yeah, the red Oof. dress, the pinned hair. She was really into that during like that like mm-hmm. between Fearless and into Speak Now, like pinning her hair to like pretend like it. she had gotten her hair cut. I thought it looked adorable. I loved it when she did mm-hmm. it. Um, additionally, that picture of her in the floor-length purple gown where she's holding a teddy bear. I cheered. Gorge. I love I mean, that. That picture. is myth building. That yeah. is that good is girl building. propaganda. Yeah. And we have to cheer and clap. I and thought it was cheered. hilarious that she got a picture with the agency because, like, if you don't know who the agency is, you're like, who are these random old people with Taylor mm-hmm. Swift? It looks like a hot topic advertisement. She's wearing like a ripped tight and like an off the shoulder sweater dress. Mm. It's 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 something. It is well, something. And there's that photo of her in like the blue top with like just like regular black jeans and boots. And I was like, remember when celebrities used to just wear normal clothes? They would just wear like clothes that they would wear out and about. It wasn't, I'm going to the Met Gala every day. That's what this Mm -hmm. was giving. I liked it. Simpler time. I I liked it. I liked it. And I cheered. It's weird because now I, I don't think Taylor has taken a picture with her band in any capacity because i mean technically she doesn't really ha- i mean she does but she doesn't have like well, a the agency band. hasn't the been agency... uttered by her in years 
no longer exists. I don't think it's been disbanded. I think the agency is no longer. She does have, mm-hmm. like, obviously her touring band. And, I mean, she still has Paul. I always almost call him Grant, and I don't and know Amos. why. Amos. And Amos. Amos. She does have Paul and Amos. I think um, the, the drummer is the same. David Cook. Remember him? The baldy? He's still around. Is he? <laughs> but you never see the drummer. One, the the musicians one. are, like, mysteriously hidden at the Eras tour. They're not even really on stage that much. Okay. But we're so, getting we're getting away from it. Getting, the shoot was good. Listen, the, shoot the shoot was, was good. good. We we clapped. We cheered. Coles, yes. Speak now. Quoted, mm-hmm. yes. It's everything. Mm-hmm. It's nothing. It's it, you know. It's one of those. <laughs> it's everything. It's nothing. <laughs> exactly. Literally. <laughs> so into you know the big moment, the actual episode itself. Now we already got into this a little bit at the top of the episode. Saturday Night Live, I don't believe, is a favorite of either of ours. To me, no. it's just excuses for celebrities to show up and sing songs or maybe get one funny skit. And the rest is just like completely filler and totally pointless. Also, a lot of the humor, and as I was watching the episode, a lot of like that time period of humor was like, hey, look, it's a man in a dress. Isn't that funny? And it's like, yeah. Eh. And a lot of, you know what? There were a lot of, shall we say, misogynistic gags that Taylor was engaging in here interesting i mean we know she hadn't had her awakening yet so they, that wasn't really on her radar but the funniest part about the monologue to me is that she fumbles her first line oh she her oh, first line. That. She oh my god I, I didn't even put that line. in i wasn't gonna welcome back to it. saturday night saturday I night live no i wasn't gonna bring that up i wasn't gonna bring that she up. chokes and i know in her head she was like i'm gonna kill myself she's like that's over i'm done all right, well, let's, Let get me into the that. <laughs> let's get into that. Let's get into that. <laughs> so she comes out. First of all, Gorgina. She looks absolutely Gorgina. Oh, she oh comes a moment out. for yeah, the she, dress. Yes. A Badgley Mishka. I put that in. I don't know who mm-hmm. that is. We don't need to know because she looks absolutely Gorgina. It's a short dress with long sleeves. I actually really like this kind of a dress. You would never catch and me wearing it. Sleeves. Yeah, you kind of see a little I would skin. Look- stupid it is for tall people exclusively mm-hmm. i can never wear something like that and look good in it she's wearing so, some giant heels and oh, she's got she really is. curls she is absolutely she's i mean kind of an iconic outfit they want to forget about it but i can't personally i will never forget and so she, then she fumbles her first line she fumbles her first line <laughs> she walks out i i actually when i was re-watching it to do this i paused it after that and i was like <sighs> yeah Okay, mm-hmm. and I had to just because move in the on. clip on YouTube they start with the song. That beginning part is <gasps> really? not there. Oh, they, it they just goes it straight out. into the song. Well, she cut they cut out. out a lot of stuff. She, they cut out a looked, lot of stuff. Yeah, she looked like really incredibly young. I thought that also. I mean, obviously she was barely twenty years old. She was young, but it's like she wow, was she was young. Like watching it is like, ooh, mm-hmm. child, they had you out there and you're badly Mishka, and they, you were doing at the beginning. <laughs> Before the guitar makes its way to her, I can't describe, but there were so many like pregnant pauses of silence where it's I really was like, hard. I it, it, yeah. could never, like hosting SNL, I think is one of the scariest things that you could do because you know that it's not that funny and you also know that you're not that funny. So you have to yeah. really like, you have to bootstrap it. You have to really be delusional to get through it. But I cheered when the color guitar came out. I was like, okay, finally we're safe. Nobody <laughs> safe. else cheered. No, there was like no one when, else when she was silence. like, I usually write a song about it. And then there was silence. And then somebody was handing her guitar, silence. And then she began like to play the guitar. And her hand silent. making contact with the guitar, silence. Girl. But you know what I, I will say? I think this, end, this ended up being one of the most iconic SNL celebrity monologues because she did something different. She did a song. She absolutely did do a song and not many people have done a song a couple yes but this is kind of like a really this actually is a really rare thing to happen and frankly the monologue song is like a really seminal piece of taylor swift lore and history and even if you were to watch it now and be like this is kind of cringy no it wasn't at the time i'm gonna tell you that mm-hmm. right now we were gagging i was like she's oh. a f- genius like she's a she's smart- a queenie not just anybody could do that i mean i bet justin bieber could do it and he couldn't have when she said, I like enough. glitter and sparkly dresses, I was at Jonestown. I was drinking Kool-Aid. <laughs> I was ready to risk it all. The brand building of this monologue, the beginning part, I'm America's sweetheart. I like baking. I like glitter. I like things that smell like winter. And the conceit of the song is, these are all the things I'm not going to talk about in my monologue. And she is thrilled to use the word douchebag. Oh, she can't wait. She she was literally gagging for people to know that she knows the term douchebag i like riding 
sing songs about douchebags who cheat on me, but I'm not gonna say that. In my monologue. Um, so she goes from, here's the cutesy things about me. I like baking, I like glitter, I like sparkly dresses. I'm America's sweetheart. She goes from that into, do you guys mind if I kill Joe Jonas on national television for about, <laughs> at that point, the third oh. time. She says, <sighs> I like writing songs about douchebags who cheat on me, but I'm not gonna say that in my monologue. And then she goes on, you might think I'd bring up Joe, that guy who broke up with me on the phone, but I'm not gonna mention Which no one him knew about. in my monologue. <laughs> and then she immediately goes, hey, Joe, I'm doing real well. I'm hosting SNL, but I'm not gonna la, talk about la, that la. in my ha, monologue. Ha, ha. Yep. La, la, now la. this was the gag. Ha, no, I gag. Ha, ha. No, I, I, and I think it was still the gag. gag today. I think this is still a gag mm -hmm. today because we don't see this. This anymore. is the kind of and we should. meta commentary referential thing that I think should have been done on her SNL episode. But this was iconic. I think the whole episode is worth it for this monologue. And also, we have to. Sabrina Carpenter needs to be giving her credit where credit is due. I'm on SNL and you're not. I mean, hello, Taylor Swift did it first. She Taylor did. Swift did it first. In many such cases. And she was really, mm -hmm. the thing that kills me is how out of her way Taylor went repeatedly to not just tell everybody, hey, Joe Jonas broke up with me, but to also make it explicitly clear how he did it and how much of it made him look like the way that he did it. She was broadcasting it worldwide. He was mm -hmm. like, oh, you think she he's was such like, a nice boy? Well, he broke up let with me, me on the you. phone. Let me on inform you. the phone. And she I, saying it on Ellen wasn't enough. That wasn't a big no. enough audience. She said, I need to talk to the adults. I need to get the adults in the room and I need to tell them about what Joe did to me too. Because then exactly. you will realize mm -hmm. and what then you will realize wrong was done on to me. And it was. And he never recovered. Well, she didn't <laughs> stop with mentioning her ex-boyfriends. Of course, she had to mention her current boyfriend, she said. And if you're wondering if I might be dating the werewolf from Twilight... And then she stopped and she mouthed, hi, Taylor, hi, Taylor. and blew him a kiss. I think She's this insane. was probably the most embarrassing moment in the monologue. She's if I had insane. To pick one, that She's really kind of broke me. Insane. She's insane. I think, you know, this was before she learned the lesson that you really shouldn't be talking about your boyfriends by name in any capacity while you're dating them. And, and yet. <laughs> and yet that lesson actually hasn't been learned. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like this was like she learned. used to do stuff like what she's doing with um, Travis right now. People are like, what the hell? But it's like, actually, I mean, if you look at the source. No, text, it, yeah. You go <laughs> she, right, right all the way back yeah. to the beginning. Yeah, she was. I love Taylor Lautner. Meanwhile, he gave her all his love and all she gave him was goodbye. Flop. And let's talk about that. They didn't let's even date for that. that long. They didn't no. even date for that long. And she was waving hi to him on SNL. Right. I mean, brand alignment was really strong with that one. Taylor Swift, Pop Princess, Taylor mm -hmm. Lautner, hunky star of uh, the biggest teen series in the world. I mean, I think Honestly, we would go on if to there get was, into that later, too. If there was any relationship that I, I would have thought was PR, even to this day, that's probably the one. That's the one. Exactly. That's yes, the one. Yes, because they were one. in a movie together as well. Yeah. I mean, I cheered. But I heard I back had fun. to December. I know that was real. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know it was real. So mm -hmm. after real. after this, after she's brought up um, Joe Jonas, she's now brought up Taylor Lautner. She then went into the third man who needed a word. And she began to really humiliate me because she did this thing where she like, the tone of the song is changing and she goes into a different key and it's like a darker oh, key. She goes, yeah. And like does this like really serious thing. It was very humiliating. And but no I let one her laughed. Cook. I let silent. her cook. She said, you might be expecting me to say something bad about Kanye and how he ran up on the stage and ruined my VMA monologue. Pause. And then she says, but there's nothing more to say because everything's okay. I've got security lining the stage. And then Jason Sudeikis and Bill Hader come out dressed as security guards and they have a picture of Kanye West like as a suspect. I mean, iconic. I I iconic i thought that was a really good mm -hmm. like was like a light way to like okay yes that happened i'm addressing it but i'm not gonna say anything else other than this like little joke that i'm gonna make this little quip i liked it it was, I enough. It was good i liked it, it. i enjoyed i was ready to move on after that but i didn't know what we we're moving on to that was the issue <laughs> At the at the very end of the song, like after, you know, they're getting ready to start the show, the, everybody's clapping. She says, we have a great show and Kanye West is not here. Okay, well, that was we funny. needed to know that. We needed to know that. Was that was funny. So she commented on literally everything that people wanted her to comment about. And clearly they did because everybody was wondering, is she going to mention X, Y, and Z? And well, she did. She, she got it all X, out of the way. And also Z. Yep. 
she got all out of the way in the start of the show and then i got the sense that this was to be like okay and now i'm just gonna like do this like really huge thing in my career now and not have it be all about kanye west now kind of a thing but it was like i think actually we could have benefited from a little Kanye moment yeah <laughs> i think we could have I think we had a funny yeah. reenactment of some description yeah. maybe someone else is playing her and she's playing another role like there could have been more iconic moments but instead we get into the first skit which is the view and taylor is playing kate goslin uh she looks a lot like her i have to say when she puts the wig on uh she, she gets it right there is this is a joke and a gag I, I, it always surprises me when i look at snl how dated it is because it's a response to whatever's going on in pop culture not just in that moment but like in that week or that month or whatever so at this moment in time john and kate plus eight if you're unfamiliar was a show about a the about the original karen she literally is the original karen with the karen haircut and everything yeah and her brood of 100 children and with her husband who she hated and they had a reality show about how she hated her life basically and taylor is doing an impression of her and it's not a good impression All, her impression of kate gosselin is to just over enunciate her words thank you Whoopi. actually that's right i'm doing lots of press that's it this was and really 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 rough this was mm -hmm. probably i mean there's a bunch of really hard to watch moments this one was bad it was like people were laughing at everybody's lines except for hers like and you could see her like stopping to hear for the laugh and then it didn't happen. Yeah, it, it, it didn't her, happen. Her it big did gag not is happen. about the, her hairstyle because she's got like the, the Karen hairstyle of like business in the front, party in the back. She said, my hairdresser was giving me the Rachel and the hairdryer exploded on the back of my head. And that lands like a lead balloon. And my next note is Andy Samberg can get it. <laughs> Andy Samberg as Nicolas Cage in this was pretty good. I also love the... um, Fred Armisen's Joy Behar really kind of kills me yeah okay, she's so saved yeah by the supporting <laughs> cast but she's also humiliated by the supporting cast Kristen wig is pretty funny in this one too it's just taylor is bad unfortunately there's really not much else to say it's not we weren't smiling this is a really bad way to start off i think they should have put this in it if they were gonna put it in at all we could have started with something a little bit different you know what i mean like this was not i did not laugh they should have started with what they went into subsequently which is the fake twilight firelight commercial yes yeah, so yeah the next skit is is the twilight skit which is the firelight um which actually like it was i thought it was like first of all it was topical second of all she's dating the werewolf from twilight so of course nice we have to talk about that it's a nice tie-in it was okay like it's not hilarious her chris and stewart impression is actually kind of good <laughs> with her I like biting say. her lip and she yeah. looked, she's wearing the brown wig she put her brown oh, she looks wig gorgeous. on can we yep. uh, this wig is so good this is like the you belong with me brunette wig but make it demure and and give yep. it a, a deep condition and a blowout and you know what it's a skit about what if twilight was about frankensteins instead of vampires who's that who him no them and she did it she does excellent she lip it. biting as you said you can tell mm -hmm. that she watched twilight she did not have to study for this it came instantaneously to her her impression of Kristen stewart's i know what you are skit might actually be better acting than the original scene <laughs> well let's call it what it is Kristen, <laughs> Kristen she was um she was a, she, she was, was in a different place she was in a different she place. was stiff let's just she say stiff. she was stiff <laughs> uh but taylor looks so pretty and i found my only note about this was that like she's not awkward and tortured enough to be bella she's like too pretty yeah she's she's yeah she's too pretty and well, I cheered. I, I'm God. loving the brown wig. Some of mm -hmm. us love the brown wig. <laughs> of all the moments, this was not the worst one. This was no. not the worst one. The next one and was then, pretty bad. The Hollywood yeah, but, dish. This is yeah. the one time where Taylor played herself and she was being interviewed by characters that are played by Bill Hader and Kristen Wiig. I did not laugh. I was silent. No. But you know, I've seen a segment. There's a clip of this they did with Scarlett Johansson where they're really it, it actually is really funny and i think the conceit of it is kind of funny it's like a send up of how absurd and ridiculous those like e news and like hollywood reporter people come across like they're just so over the top and like insincere um and they do this like psychotic active listening thing when taylor's talking which is like kind of funny but it doesn't go anywhere and taylor just has to do a maniacal laugh and no one laughs <laughs> There is um, a Kanye West reference in this skit. 
and that's it. Like, that's the only thing that's interesting about it. They just ask her about it. And that's it's it. boring. A lot of these things are really fucking boring. Now, yeah. here is where I really was ready to debt my own vest. Um, Samantha Samuels. Didn't laugh. <laughs> she, she's didn't. wearing the the braces with the headpiece. The big now, this like, is what she's she like a teenager from the eighties. She should have put oh, that yeah. on for you belong with me. If you were really oh, trying to be the dorky ugly girl, this is what you should oh, have absolutely. worn. Not just a pair of glasses. We needed the side pony. We needed the mouth yep. metal. Mm-hmm. And instead, this is this is so I actually don't even have the words. This is so embarrassing. She is acting as an embarrassed teen who is doing an infomercial. Mom! Get out! You're ruining my commercial! And um it's just so not <laughs> It's just not she funny. She's the founder of Teens Raising Awareness About Awful Parent Drivers. That's just not funny. Hmm. And I blame Trash. the writers for this one. This actually isn't her fault. This is bad writing. No. Well, I, honestly, a, a lot of this is not entirely Taylor's fault. Like, if, mm-hmm. it, if you guys were there, too. The adults were in the room. We could have been fixing all these things that were going on. But you said, no, 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 no. Put her, put her in the cake. Samantha Samuels. <laughs> that one really yeah. is probably one of the best ones. Uh, she's also, you know what? She's giving it everything. And sometimes giving it everything has the effect of making it better. But sometimes giving it everything has the effect of making it so much more humiliating. And that's where we were. This was her favorite character to play. She said after that the show. That does not surprise me. No. That does Doesn't not surprise me surprise- Well, it was the closest character to her life. Uh, one of them actually there was another one who was also very close to her (laughs) as a person Mm. but then mercifully thank god we get into the live performance of you belong with me we had been needing that oh we've been needing it we had been needing it this performance was good honestly so she comes out a good one she is wearing um she's feeling giovanni Many I, such cases. Me. When you feeling told me that, that she was Giovanni. Funny. And her jewelry was also kind of feeling Giovanni, oh, too. Those she, bracelets. Yep. It was very Giovanni fearless for coded. The dress yes, was fearless for coded. The boots. Black boots. Can't she go wrong. She wearing her black boots. She had her white microphone. Um, in her defense, and in like everybody who goes on Saturday Night Live's defense, the SNL soundstage is the mixing on that stage is notorious. Noted. Bad. Horrible. It's bad like a place. thing. Uh, mm-hmm. well, we, Lana Del Rey was cooked alive by that. We we know it. Lana Del Rey was a victim. Ashley Simpson, many such cases. People have been victims to Saturday Night Live. It's not just you can't Taylor. even lip sync it because it's right. not worth yeah. the risk. It's, it's not, not worth, worth the risk. The risk. You, you can't don't go know like Ashley how your Simpson. career will end. <laughs> your career will end. But, but you know what? The vocals are actually pretty it, good. She's yeah. doing her hair flips. Can I just say I miss the full body neck breaking hair flips? Where did they go? She could still do that. I would I would like to see a return of my head down, my hair up, but I guess it wouldn't hit the same without the curls because the curls are really clocking in and doing the work there. She's giving face. She's doing clap, clap. Her makeup is really nice. You know what I noticed, though, about her band at this period of time? And this is really accentuated by the bad mixing of music on SNL. They were really into, like, dude rock versions of Taylor Swift songs. Like, everything was just a little... The guitars were a little yeah. too dirty. There was a little too much yeah. reverb. Yep. And it yep. gave the effect, especially when she started singing badly, like with Forever and Always, it would give the effect of school talent show. That's what it Yeah, it always like reminded me of like um a wedding band a lot of mm. times. Oh my so, God, like, that's they would exactly play the songs. Is. Um and it's great. Grant, you know, that that guitar lick, thump, 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 you know what I'm talking about? Not yep. the main guitar lick, but like that mm-hmm. like reverb version of it. Yep. It was always way too loud when he was there. Yeah. He, yeah, he was 100%. fired, so. And he was fired. And we <laughs> cheered. And we, and cheered. we cheered. So after my, this. Oh. My next note is Seth Meyers in my bed now. Why? Was he even there? Seth Meyers weekend update. No, he did the weekend update. <laughs> oh, and <laughs> yep. Taylor wasn't on it. Taylor and Taylor wasn't, on, wasn't it. on it. They should and, have I had mean, Taylor on it in her dress after the VMA thing or doing something. Like, that could have been funny. Oh, that would have been really funny. I'm, I'm, I feel like there was definitely – I mean, we know she was really sick of talking about it. Remember when she walked away from mm-hmm. the phone? I think she just oh, reached yeah. a plateau and she was like, "I, it's not I, funny I'm to me. A record. Yeah, I'm, I'm not doing a record laughing now. at this point. Mm-hmm. So let's just move on. And I think that, I mean, yeah, it would have been nice if she didn't, you know what I mean? But it's like, I kind of get why she didn't. Because it's like, she's 20 years old and that was like, <laughs> that was like 9-11. It was to her. It really was. <laughs> yeah, that was it really 9-11. Was. Yeah. Only the first of many, sadly. 
next taylor's a character in a penelope skit i penelope... hated it hated it hated it hated it hated <laughs> penelope it. i hate is penelope one of Kristen wiggs <laughs> most famous snl characters and her thing is that she's a perennial one-upper she just has yeah. to outdo everyone in the room and i think that anyone who is trapped in a skit with penelope is doomed because penelope is not that funny but the only response that a character can have to penelope is to just get progressively more mad and to just keep trying to one-up her and point out her ridiculousness but Penelope just gets more ridiculous. So it's just like that the, the whoever is trapped in a skit with her does the same thing over and over again. Doesn't matter who you are. And Taylor is the is the victim. She is the victim. In a gorgeous brunette wig, though. Penelope is ruining this entire reception. Look, you making a scene isn't gonna make it any better. Well, she's ruining their day. This is my day, so I bought it from the government. It's National Penelope Day in 14 countries. <laughs> she was loving that wig. She was mm -hmm. wearing that wig and loving that wig, baby. I thought she it was good. installed. I thought it she was good. installed on her head. Oh, she looked great. Gorgina. It just sucks that the the um the acting performance was. You know what? This isn't her worst acting in, in the the episode, though. This is probably no. her best acting because it, it is the most that like bad. it's the most benign like, thing. Benign thing, and I thought it. I s skipped most of it because I just can't stand Penelope. Like the I don't think it's funny. Penelope I is find annoying. It, hard to watch Gilly is another Kristen wig character that i loathe i don't like her really on saturday night live i've liked her in other things but i don't i'm not I've crazy about have funny moments but none none in this episode there actually no. wasn't an itch ball moment in this entire episode for me like there was nothing that actually made me like really laugh the only thing that made me laugh was fred armison's randy newman now that was a little bit too good and i was like that's crazy well, <laughs> randy newman there you go it's one of, something about it. It can always make me laugh. <laughs> we need to move on to something that silenced me so bad. And I tried you know, to forget if about you, it. If you are one of the people that thinks that Thug Story is inappropriate, you don't. You need to tune out now because Taylor is okay. The skit is it's a scared straight program. There are a bunch of young convicts that are going to be scared by people who just got out of jail. Taylor is with Keenan Thompson, one of the people who has just gotten out of jail, and she is legit Eminem with a chromosomal disorder. Like that <laughs> is what she is. She is a white criminal with Corn Rose, and her like character's thing that she's decided is that he stares off kind of like cross eyed into space and like doesn't look where he's supposed to look and like does these weird physical expressions this is unbelievable she's like menacing these young criminals with a goatee on her face and a head full of cornrows only song you'll be singing is this one doe john doe the name they'll give your corpse rape a thing that's done to you <clears throat> <laughs> it's really silencing it it's bad it's really really bad and what's really bad is that people are not laughing at her people are laughing at no. Katie thompson they are not, not at laughing at her there's this part in the skit where they're like trading off lines like her and keenan are trading off lines and they're doing like um so la mi va fa ta ti do from oh, sound oh of... i got oh i got and it written down yeah. it's a beautiful song do john doe the name they'll give your corpse rape a thing that's done to you me why i want my mom far inside you they will go Excuse me? Silence. 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 And you know who is laughing at Taylor? Taylor. She bro almost broke several <laughs> She's times. She's laughing. She's <laughs> laughing at herself. <laughs> yep, she yep. thinks this is the funniest thing that's ever Who's happened. Who's laughing? Who's laughing? Only Taylor. Oh, not I. <laughs> Only Taylor. Not, not me. I. But she thought this was her best performance of the night. She thought that she was literally oh, she was like, being this is the funniest thing that's ever happened. The funniest person in the room. I just think that she got the giggles when they put the cornrows on her. And, and it was over. That was it. And it, it was, was over. I actually do not even have like the no, correct I don't have the words. words to I don't describe have the words. how bad this was. And you can't find this anywhere. You cannot find this skit. I, I think this was the first time I saw it in full. Really? <laughs> yep, because we don't have SNL. We don't have SNL in Singapore. So when it was out, I had to like, and this was in 2009. So I was using like janky live streams and it would like cut out and cut out and cut out. 
and I got her monologue and I got the performances, but some of the skits like just would stop loading. And I don't think I even got to hear all of Untouchable at the time. But yeah, when I saw it in full, oh, ooh. ouch. No, it's it's shocking. It's very shocking. This is definitely the worst moment of the show. Uh, again, with, if there was a team of people who put this together. This isn't like Taylor herself cooked this up. Taylor this didn't put a- herself in cornrows. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> that, this is that supposed to be. Not- <laughs> well, maybe she did because she loved doing Thug Story too. She loved that. She loved that. She loved that. Um, this was like organized by the Mount Rushmore of comedians. Like you have Mount some Rushmore. of the all-time greats yep. in the right hater and Andy this, Samberg, and, and this, this is what they is were what cooking you come up with. It's appalling. Kenan Thompson. We they didn't have off. words. This is ChatGPT before <laughs> ChatGPT even existed. Oh, for sure, they had completely given up at this point. I and think who can blame GPT them? ChatGPT actually could come up with something better. I think it could. <laughs> I, I, I this think is not so. I think so. But you know what? But, Her final skit is equally as silencing to me. I think that it, between the two, like that one's pretty bad. But this one is just like it's, it's so abysmally so annoying boring. In this. It's just horrible. It's the one where they, she's like roommates with a girl who it, her boyfriend is Amy Sandberg, and they're like, "So we're gonna watch a movie together." And then Taylor Swift's character comes home, and like her and her roommate are obsessed they're codependent with each other. besties, basically. Yeah, codependent besties, and they're just like all over each other, and they do like cluck a cluck a cluck a cluck. Why were they doing that? I still I the don't, answer to that. They were question, doing little secret handshakes. Like the the yeah. theme of the skit is my girlfriend has a really annoying roommate. Oh no, it's not funny. It's it's really annoying. Taylor is unbearable in this skit. She is so annoying. Hey, Bennett. You want some blanket? I'm um, okay. <laughs> Bennett. <laughs> I missed you. I missed you too. Quit your job. And this character is not funny. There's nothing funny about this character. It's just irritating. You know what I was thinking when I watched this? I was like, unfortunately, if they really wanted it, this could be Gaylor Ammo. <laughs> if they really wanted to take it, if they really wanted to 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 do something crazy, they've done crazier things with lesser material. There's something there for them. Oh, so, there's something girls, very delicious there for them to chew on. And you watch. know what? I say have it. Have at it. Codependent besties, two girls that are obsessed with each other. <laughs> have fun, my friends. Do the math. Do the math. <laughs> then we get into another performance. What is she performing, Madeline? So this is when she performs Untouchable. She puts on, well, she puts on another beautiful dress. gown. I mean, we, we have to say Gorgeous. dress. We need to say dress. She Glitter is ombre wearing, yes. into a white tulle. Oof. Who's the designer? Do we know? Marchesa. It is a Marchesa Ooh. gown. And she she looks absolutely beautiful. She is wearing these oh. gorgeous, like, earrings. Her hair is big. She's got a little gloss on her lips. And, her and, and that's where that's where it stopped because then the singing started. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this well, is probably this is not her best. I'm gonna put it that way. No, it, it's so sad no. because you belong with me was so good, and yes. I just think there was something going on with like the the mixing and like also it's SNL and then also it's like the song was new and she wasn't used to playing it this way before and like this that and the other thing like it just was not her best at all. But she looked like a like a queen. She live like falsetto at this specific moment in her career with this voice was something that was not her strong suit. And she definitely has to do falsetto a lot in the chorus of Untouchable. And, you know, throughout the performance, she is leaning heavy on Liz and Caitlin for backup, as she should. But, you know, I always wondered at this point in her career, to avoid the wedding band sound, we should have just had a little bit of track in the background. Mm-hmm to lean yeah, on I think instead so of having Caitlyn and Liz because that makes it so much clearer that she can't sing. So we should have just had the auto-tune nice vocals in the background. I mean, this could have been a really beautiful performance, but unfortunately the live vocals left something to be desired. It wasn't great. It was not her best. You Belong With Me was good, but this... Um... It got really bad at the end. Like the end of Untouchable where she starts going with the ad-libs, that, is the, that really is where we start to go off the rails. And <laughs> maybe people had tuned out. Maybe people had tuned out. I did. Show off. Oh, I did. <laughs> I did. I was like, this isn't Thank going the way you. that I wanted to. This is that not going really the way that I wanted to at all. And then, of course, we have the final skit that she's in. Um, <laughs> she does a Shakira impression. What's weird? Which about is not this a Shakira skit, impression. It's not a Shakira no, impression. What's it weird is, is that I have snot in my throat, and I'm gonna run. 
that's what it sounds like. I'm running and I have a really snotty right. nose. So many bunnies on the floor tonight. Hot pinky shaking their bunny hips to the sheep on me and all of us. Oh. What's weird about this skit is that it's about a it's made up funny. movie about bunnies who want to work in an office and have a corporate job. And the movie has a soundtrack that features <laughs> a song so by Shakira. Stupid. This is so stupid. <laughs> and interesting, this skit came out seven years before the number one worldwide hit, never been done before a film, Zootopia, which is a movie about a bunny who wants to work as a police officer, which has a soundtrack that features a song by Shakira. You tell oh, well, me. Okay. You tell me. Te Nostradamus. Te Nostradamus. She invented Zootopia, and for that... We can never repay her. Zootopia, great. And she invented made. Shakira, too. She invented Shakira. What's <laughs> weird is that the, the it's not the worst thing I've ever seen her Shakira impression. Like, it's definitely not great. And she's lucky. Shakira said, oh, that's oh, cute. She was she's flattered. lucky. She said mm-hmm. she was flattered. She said, I love Taylor. I think she's awesome. She's beautiful and a great talent. And that is just really, really funny. Well, it could have gone worse. It, it could have gone, gone worse. worse. And we have to it smile. It really could have gone worse. And we just have to smile for that because that could have been something else. But this was in a time period where people were saying, we love Taylor. And thank God. Thank we needed it. We had been <laughs> yeah, needing we needed it. it. We really had been, been needing, needing it. it. We had been needing it. We had been needing it. And it was fairly well received. I mean, we couldn't find that many reviews because I think people don't really care that much about, you know, reviewing SNL. Also, it was hard for Taylor to get music reviews because everybody was being misogynistic at this point in time. It was hard for her to get reviewed seriously by any tabloid, tabloid, sorry, any publication. But you know, this could have been, I was going to say it could have been worse, but the acting was kind of as worse as it could have been. I haven't seen her do worse <laughs> acting than that. Have you? I really love that <laughs> sentence. The acting was as worse as it could have been. <laughs> um, have I seen worse acting from Taylor than what's going on in Saturday Night Live? No, I think Saturday Night Live was really, I, I don't this is think the peak comedy, of it. I don't think comedy is her no. wheelhouse. I think no. that there's there's definitely roles where she did better. I mean, I thought I didn't think that she was winning Oscars when she did The Giver, but I thought she was okay. Well, in Cats, relative to everyone else, <laughs> she held her own. That yes. was it was something. Mm-hmm. And also, that. when she did her new girl cameo, she that was cute. It was quick. It was cute. It was no, cute. cute. It was simple. I- I just don't think she's meant to do impressions. Let's start there. I don't, I don't, <laughs> yes. it's not for everybody. Not everybody can do no, that. No, impressions there's are hard. A I can do them. Yeah. There's a reason why it's Mm-mm. hard to become like Andy Samberg. Like not just anybody's mm-hmm. walking around being Andy Samberg because it's hard. It's a real talent. It's a real talent. That she does not have. No. No. And you know what? Many people don't. Many people don't. I, I think this is when she got in her mind, the acting bug. This is when she was like, I can be an actress and I have news for you. You can't. You shouldn't. You can't. You won't. I think she's learned. I think Cats honestly was the reality check that she needed. Cats was such a weird part of the Lover era. Honestly, what would have happened if it weren't for you know who, or should I say you know what, entering the chat in 2020? We don't know. We don't. We don't know. know. That this, we do I, not know. Thank God know. we don't know. Thank God we <laughs> thank don't. Thank God. And thank God we don't know. Well. well that was SNL. Let us know if you guys enjoyed our first Tay Rewind. I mean, we obviously get into all of the nuts and bolts of these things as we go through our yearly episodes, but because we have so much to cover, we don't often get to like hone in on one thing. So we thought it would be fun because there is just so much lore to explore mm. in the Tay universe that we would hone in on stuff. So if you have a suggestion of a period of time, maybe it's an event, an interview, uh, a song even, or a specific part of an era let us know we're definitely open to suggestions and you have to come to the patreon to get weekly episodes of the podcast uh, i mean cup. weekly bonus episodes because we're we're weekly here shake the cup come join us it's fun come get access to the discord where you can have a kiki about all of our episodes and we will see you in the next one goodbye swifties